Hey there, fellow DIY concrete enthusiast. Welcome to my dry pour concrete adventure. But hold on, before we dive into the concrete stuff, let me tell you how this all started with my very first stepping stone project. It was like a mini experiment, and boy, was it a smashing success. I'll be sharing a separate video of that triumph soon, so stay tuned. Now, let's move on to the real deal. Behold, the pile of stones near my AC unit. These were once the glorious borders of my flower bed, but I've decided to give them a facelift with some better looking stones. I might even be generous and give these away. Now, feast your eyes on the battleground where I'll be pouring my concrete masterpiece. Yup, this area is a real challenge, especially during rainy days. It turns into a muddy mess, making it look like a prime candidate for a concrete makeover. But wait, we've got sprinklers, power cables, house ground wire, and even fiber cable for the internet lurking beneath the surface. It's like an obstacle course DIY style. First things first, let's deal with this sprinkler head. Say goodbye to sprinkler water fights. There are three methods for capping off a sprinkler head. First option, utilizing a flat sprinkler cap or plug without any digging. It is crucial to ensure you choose the correct cap size for your specific sprinkler system. However, this method might not be suitable if you intend to pour concrete over the area. Second option, opting for a PVC cap on the riser, which is the approach I took. This method is both straightforward and long-lasting, making it the most convenient option. And third option, employing a PVC pipe cap, though this technique requires additional digging compared to the previous options. Now I am on a mission to conquer the dirt around this riser, like a dirt ninja. And after some serious cleaning action, I introduced it to its fancy new half an inch threaded schedule 40 PVC cap. I gave it the good hand tight treatment. It looks stylish and functional, don't you think? I filled the dirt back and tried to compact it with the help of a piece of wood, as much as I can. Next up, the grass had to make way for my concrete extravaganza. Into the trash bags, it went, farewell, green friends. Oh, but wait, there were a few more piles to take care of. It's like the grass was having a going away party in my backyard. To ensure a level concrete surface, I started marking on the main slab. While digging, I encountered a bunch of ants. I was prepared though, with a spray pump to handle the situation. After the cleaning and marking, the main slab was all set. For pouring concrete alongside the main slab, I use concrete expansion joints. These are essential when pouring concrete near your house's main slab. I aligned them with my markings, making sure they were at the correct height. Next, I marked the fence post with a slope, directing water away from the house. I used 1 inch by 3 inch by 8 foot furring wood strip and supported it with stones instead of using screws. On the other side, I opted for a slight slope from left to right. supporting everything with the stones that I already had.
all these wood pieces were just chilling. No screws, no commitments, just free spirits enjoying life on the ground. With the borders and expansion joints all in place, the foundation is ready for the concrete. Oh, one more thing, I need to compact the soil to create a solid base for the concrete. Finally, soil compacted, mission accomplished. My soil compressing skills are on point. Oh boy, I went for concrete mix shopping. I grabbed almost 30 bags. I have 18 bags here and rest of them in my garage. And you know what? I even used the online calculator to make sure I got the perfect amount. I'll make sure to share that magical calculator link in the description. Now, let's talk about the mysterious house ground wire. Spooky stuff. I wanted to play it safe and leave some breathing room around it. You know, just in case it doesn't go along with concrete. I used not one, but two empty toilet paper rolls. Yeah, you heard that right. To give that ground wire the VIP treatment. Tape it up with some duct tape. And voila, we have a safe space for our concrete to play nice. But wait, the concrete has a little secret. It's thirsty for moisture. So, I turned on the garden hose and watered the soil. You see, happy concrete needs to stay hydrated from the bottom up. A little H2O magic, and we're good to go. It's showtime, my friends. With everything prepared, it's time to start pouring the concrete. To provide extra support from the inside, I poured it along the wood border. For added strength, I used two wire meshes to support the concrete. After pouring the first inch of concrete, I carefully laid down the first wire mesh. These mesh heroes are like the super soldiers of the concrete world. And because we want our concrete to be super sturdy, I added another wire mesh on top, making sure they overlapped each other. Next, my main task is to make the concrete surface level and smooth. I was careful and spent enough time to get it right.
I am almost done leveling the concrete, but the top surface didn't turn out as smooth as I hoped. I had a clever idea. I stepped over it, and guess what? It actually got a bit smoother. Now, I know it's not the usual way to do it, but in DIY projects, you sometimes have to think outside the box and take small risks. So, I carefully stepped all over the concrete to gently compress it and make the surface a little smoother. Now, you might notice some sleeper marks on the concrete, but fear not. I have a plan to get rid of them. All right, now I am moving on to smoothing the edges. The trick here is to keep things consistent, maintain the same pressure and angle as you work your way along the edge. Doing this will give you a nice, even finish, making everything look uniform and neat. Here is the plan to tackle those sleeper marks on the concrete. I've got my trusty dry paint roller ready for action. When I use it on the surface, it's like pure magic. It brings up some extra concrete powder, and the result is a much nicer, smoother finish. It's a simple yet effective trick that works wonders. With this little DIY magic, my concrete will be looking flawless. Take a look here. You can see the difference before and after using the paint roller. It's pretty impressive, right? The surface looks much smoother and better now. But you know what? I'm not stressing over getting it absolutely perfect. After all, this area is just for my trash bins, so I didn't spend too much time on it. It may not be flawless, but it's definitely good enough for its purpose. Finally, time for some water action. I'm using the mist setting on the hose to gently wet the top layer of the concrete. The key is to give it just enough water to change the color slightly. Not too much, not too little. Getting the right amount of water is super important at this stage. After waiting for 30 minutes, I watered the concrete once more using the mist settings. After waiting for one hour, I watered again using the shower settings. So, with a little patience and the right watering routine, we're on track to have a strong and sturdy concrete slab. Can you believe it? After four hours and four rounds of watering, suddenly, out of nowhere, we got hit with a heavy downpour that lasted for a solid 30 minutes. Talk about unexpected weather. But you know what? Looking at the bright side, I can't help but feel a little lucky. I mean, imagine if that rain came three or four hours ago, when the concrete was still fresh. It would have been a total disaster. Thankfully, it held up pretty well despite the surprise rain shower. It's the next morning, and I must say, things are looking pretty good overall. The concrete surface is solid enough for me to walk on without any worries. I'm feeling a bit disappointed by looking at this damage. And now I've got my hands full with fixing a pesky pothole. But don't worry, I'll tackle that pothole and have this project looking flawless in no time. But on the bright side, the rest of the concrete held up nicely. Those sneaky little holes were caused by the big water drops from my electric enclosures right above this area.
All right, it's time to remove these toilet paper rolls. I'm going to fill this hole with some pea-sized gravel. You know, just to keep those pesky bugs, especially frogs, from turning it into their cozy home. Next up, let's get this area cleaned up and prepped for some touch-ups. I want everything nice and tidy before we give it that final finish. Let's pour some concrete into this hole and level it out, making it nice and even. Okay, now it's time to water the concrete. Oh no, I totally forgot to use the paint roller to smooth the top surface. My bad, but hey, no worries, it happens. I'm considering filling this area with soil or dirt, but I think it's better to use concrete. That way, when I move the trash bins, they won't break the corners. Sounds like a smart move, right? I poured the concrete to create a nice slope here. Now, let's work on leveling and smoothing the surface to make it look even better. And there you have it, the final result. The hole is filled, and I have created a small slope. I followed the same watering steps as before, misting it twice, and then giving it a gentle shower for three to four times every hour. After a week, I moved the trash bin to its new spot, and I must say, it's looking pretty neat and clean. I made sure to leave some extra space on the left side to allow the rainwater to flow out smoothly. It's essential for proper drainage, so we don't end up with any unwanted water pooling in the area. Safety first. I really hope you liked the project. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more interesting projects like this, please subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to click on the bell icon to get notified of my new video posts. Have a fantastic time. Bye for now.